Jamie, whew, again, you dazzle me. I could feel that. Uh, I always get emotional when I hear that speech from JFK, and I really appreciate you sharing that with us today. Jamie is an independent politician out of Vancouver, and I'd ask if people please Google Jamie. He's got some amazing speeches on YouTube. You have to check him out. He's been here before, and you're just a champion, so, so, so keep it up, Jamie. We really appreciate it. Yeah. So I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Her name is Nora Holloway. She is an independent freedom advocate here in Victoria. Nora, the microphone is yours. Keep it close to the other one, too. I'm a shorty, so. <laughs> Good. Thanks, everybody, for being here, and thank you for the last speaker. That guy is amazing. Um, I just want to say that we live in a land that's governed by legal terms, legal definitions, statutes, legislation, and a whole lot of rules. It would be impossible to know every single law that has been passed over the past hundred years, yet they govern us. We are forced to abide by these laws. And if you're like myself, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not licensed to practice the law. I'm not licensed to interpret the law. So how am I to abide by these laws if I can't even understand them? I'm not here to remind you how much we're enclosed in a box governed by statutes and laws. We already know that. Has, an every, has anybody looked at the Motor Vehicle Act? Has anyone browsed through it, even the Income Tax Act? Ever look at the Bill of Rights or the Constitution? Yep. <laughs> These acts don't just exist for the benefit of the government. Oh. There are reasons that these exist and there are reasons why they're not told to us in school. You have to earn your freedoms, you have to understand who you are and you have to know where you're going. We're all incredibly important to the freedoms of this land. We are here to do more than just pay our bills, to show up for work and work for the man. I'm here to show you respect that you're not just a person. You are men and women born free to this land who then are more than just pieces of paper. You've heard you have rights. You do, you have a lot of them. Your rights end where another's begin. That is a very powerful statement because it rings incredibly true. Your rights don't come from the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. They don't come from a piece of paper. You are given them, you are born with them, and they are yours. The, advice, the best advice that I can give you is understand who you are who you are as men and women, and who you are in every other capacity when you walk outside that door and you hit the streets and you're talking to people, when you're in your car, anywhere. You play many roles and it's an important aspect to understand who it is that you are. There's many sites that I can direct you to uh, to understand a little bit more exactly what I'm speaking about uh, one that I can think of is deanclifford.info. That's deanclifford.info. <laughs> dtaxcanada.org. And uh, there's a lot of other sites that link to this where you can understand exactly what it is to enforce your rights. And, and it's only government by, governed by consent. So you actually have to consent to be governed. So it's just important that we all understand that there's more to life than just rules and regulations. Thank you. How you doing everybody? Give me a hell yeah for freedom. 
All right, exercise our First Amendment today. This is what we're all here to do. I'm just going to introduce the next. By the way, my name is Ian McIntosh. I'm a local here in Victoria, member of We Are Change, proud member of We Are Change Victoria. Yeah! If anybody doesn't know about the group, they're a local group concerned about the issues of the day and bringing awareness and uh, expressing our rights to, uh, you know, spread the word out to people that aren't awake. We're just here to wake people up, spread the news, gain a collective consciousness here in the community as well. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Brad Rhodes, he's a uh, local activist here in Victoria, part of the We Are Change group as well. Uh, he's the star of uh, Rhodes Rage on Freedom Free For All. It's a local uh, community television program here. If you haven't had a chance to view any of these videos on, the, on YouTube or on the internet, please do so. Very informative and very, very good. Uh, he's also an activist who's ran for uh, federal politics here in BC as well. So, without further ado, Brad Rhodes. Hello, how you doing out there? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we've heard a lot of good speakers so far. A lot of good things have been mentioned. Uh, not the least of which is uh, raising our standards of expectation. Uh, I think we have a serious problem with that in this country. We accept uh, absolutely dismal performance from our politicians and from our media and that absolutely has to change. And the way to change that is to raise the standards that we expect. I mean as a professional person, I don't care what trade you're in, you take pride in your work, you stand behind it. Why should we allow other people to work on our behalf who don't even come close to that standard of respectability? It doesn't make any sense. That is not a balanced and just society. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking uh, directly about the fact that our society is not uh, developed mentally enough to scrutinize the deceptions and lies that we are subject to. This is a monumental problem. This is a huge problem and it's one that we have to sack. We have got to get to the point where we can deliberately and scrutinize our, our politicians and our power brokers that presume the prerogative to govern over us. And that's going to happen when we no longer have mind control. Okay? Mind control. That is a, fa a fact that we are suffering from in this society. It is very easy to verify, verify this. Um, I was talking just the other day uh, with a family member, as a matter of fact. Gotta stay close to this microphone. Uh, as it turns out, I had recently had a conversation with a member of my family, and the subject came up about media mind control. My family member assured me that they were certainly not under the influence of mind control. And they were offended by the idea that I would even suggest such a thing. That's fair enough. So uh, I, uh, I knew this person bought the official 9-11 story. Okay, so I use this illustration as a singular example of media mind control as it is arguably the most obvious one. Now, here the story goes that on 9-11, 110 story steel frame buildings hit by airplanes fell straight down into their own footprints at free fall speeds under 10 seconds. Now, let's picture this for a moment. Okay, as each floor collapses, all right, it hits another floor. This should cause a delay. And then it hits another floor. This should cause a delay. Then we're talking about steel frame, reinforced mesh steel, concrete, Okay, it causes resistance every time you hit the floor, right? Okay, so uh, the official story says all this happened in under 10 seconds. That's just not possible if you do the math. It's just not possible, okay? Uh, talk to architects, engineers, uh, people that actually do demolition for profession. Uh, it, it just doesn't compute. 
If you take a 10-story building, let's just suppose, okay, because you're talking 110 stories under 10, uh, within 10 seconds, that's about one second per 10 stories, right? So take, look at that stock concrete frame, uh, you know, steel frame, concrete reinforced building, and drop it in one second. It's the same analogy. It doesn't compute. Not unless you take out the infrastructure from within the building. Ask any demolition expert. It's not rocket science, it's really, this is elementary. So, I mean, if you isolated this scenario, where you have this building falling like that, under any other circumstances except for under the environment where the media controls your perception, you'd figure it out in a New York second. You'd say, you know, that's, that's impossible. But because it was presented to you through media mind control, you bought it. Okay? Now, it's, I can make excuses for people that aren't in position of authority or a position to, uh, you know, guide society. Uh, you know, we just we go along to get along and we're, we're preoccupied and we don't investigate things. Fine enough, but when you have people in a position of authority, it is their job to know what's going on. It is inexcusable to be that incompetent. So, as I uh, continued on the, uh, on the conversation with uh, my family member, I asked them if they ever heard of Building 7. It wasn't even hit by an airplane. A 47-story building falling into its own footprint strictly due to fire. No airplane on this one at all. Okay? Uh, then look at the 9-11 fable that does not add up at the Pentagon. Once again, look at the debris fields. Where is the evidence? There is no evidence. Just like the evidence down at the bottom of the towers. There should have been a pancake of, of buildings laying on top of it. It's just blown to smithereens. Most of the stuff is just fine dust. Okay? That is not a collapse scenario. So, um, if you believe the official story of 9-11, which is absolute rubbish, clearly you are under mind control. That's it. Sorry to break the news to you, but that's a fact. Okay? Now, there was a great article in a magazine. I don't know if you've heard of the, uh, the new Agora. It's, a, it's produced. We have copies down here. Great articles and very interesting uh, synopsis of many events that are facing us in today's society. I suggest you take a look at it. But uh, in the September issue on the 2013, uh, there was an article by Julius Sequeira, I hope I pronounced that right, <laughs> and it was called Defining the Line of Conscience by Julius Sequeira. And in the, I'm going to quote that article. It would be safe to say that any, everyone in every field of endeavor of the world can be identified by their position on this seminal event. It is not necessary to know the truth about 9-11. It is only necessary to know the extent of the lies in order to define any leader in any position anywhere in the world by what they have said and by what they have not said. One can accurately judge who is the enemy of the peoples of the world. One can accurately determine who is a tool of the psychopaths who perpetrated this heinous act or is perhaps one of them. Yeah. Now I would interject. Do you want freedom? Yeah. Do you want solutions? Yeah. Okay, then we need to identify the people within our media, but particularly within our government, that go along with the official lies as the people that need to be expelled from the position of power and authority and influence because they are either A, mentally incompetent, or B, corrupt. Yeah. And therefore, they cannot be trusted with our children's future. Yeah. The article goes on to say, it tells you the place where your conscience lives, or once lived, whether you are a hypocrite, a fool, or whether something greater still lives within you. It is impossible for any rational thinking people to accept that 9-11 was a lie and simultaneously reject the fact that there is a shadow force at work that is being kept hidden from us. These two realities are inseparable. They're fused at the hip. No thinking mind can accept one and dismiss the other. You have to, ha all you have to do is open your eyes and think. 
If 9-11 was a lie, then everything of importance you watch on television and read in newspapers is an organic outgrowth of that monstrous lie. The same force that orchestrated 9-11 also controls the very high, at the very highest level of the mainstream media the f that feeds your mind. So in other words, everything you are being force-fed is bullshit. That's the article. I didn't write it, I'm just reading it. It goes on to say, take a good hard look in the mirror, my friend, and question what you see there. Are you a traitor? Are you a coward? Are you a fool? Or an intelligent human being with a conscience and the responsibility to do what is right and good for your family, your society, your country, and for humanity. Yeah. Then act as your inner compass guides you. Yeah. 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 Nothing less than the future of the world is at stake. So, we're talking about raising the standards. Let's raise them. If people are in charge and in a position of authority, they need to prove that they're at least mentally competent enough to understand grade five physics. <laughs> and do not presume to tell me what is true. If you have, you have in, in any argument, you have your side, you have my side, you have, the tr you have the truth. You could have a wall that's out of whack or maybe leaning some way. And one guy says, no, it's leaning this way. No, it's leaning that way. No, it's leaning this way. No, it's leaning that way. Or you can simply put a plumb bob up, check the freaking wall, measure off the plumb bob, and you can decide which way it's leaning. Okay? So there's no your truth and my truth, there is the truth. In any argument, there's your side, my side, but there's always the truth. And in order to accurately assess what the problems are, we have to accurately accept, uh, understand what the truth is. Nothing short of this will do. These people are incompetent. Anyone that is not speaking up about this issue that is getting our troops into foreign countries to kill people we know nothing about. Bombing children with depleted uranium and white phosphorus. Morally indefensible. It is time to set the standards. Thank you very much, Jim. It's raised very high. We do it for ourselves. Let's make damn sure we do it for those who presume to be in charge. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, everybody, for coming today to our third Freedom of Solutions rally. My name is Patch Clue, and uh, I'm with We Are Change Victoria. And our next three speakers all came down from Nanaimo. Uh, first off, I'd like to introduce uh, from Nanaimo. He's a peace activist. He's here to talk about Freedom of Solutions, Mr. Raymond Geisler. That looks about good. Thanks. My name is Raymond Geisler and I want to welcome you to the third annual Freedoms and Solutions Rally hosted by Victoria We Are Change out of British Columbia, Canada. We are here today to practice our freedom of assembly and speech while we still have it. Like many of the speakers you will hear today, I am going to focus this talk on political solu solutions to some of the many problems created and aided by our so-called federal and provincial leaders. Personally, I am mad as hell about the direction our country is taking on nearly every front. I implore my citizens, uh, my fellow citizens, to become fully educated to the monumental failings of our alleged democracy. This rally today is also in response to the global crackdown on peaceful protests through excessive police force and the criminalization of dissent. On a personal level, I hope this speech is an accurate expression of my love for humanity. More than likely, this is the reason why each of us are here today. We know that the answers to our problems must be rooted in expressions of love, respect, and responsibility for one another. I believe that I am speaking to the civil-minded choir today, the students of history and the lovers of life. 
We know that we are living in an amazing and often frightening time, this age of global fascism. But we are here today to show our resistance and to stand up for what is sacred. We want the control of our future back. Most of us here today have come to the conclusion that our federal government is not trustworthy. And for those that think the NDP or the Trudeau Liberals are here to save us, you are gravely misinformed. Yeah. Put simply, for 99% of us, our democracy is broken and on life support. A healthy democracy takes a hell of a lot more work than merely putting an X on a ballot every few years. I have come to realize that the concept of democracy is both the solution and perhaps the main problem in Canadian politics today. The type of democracy we have today is called totalitarian democracy, a system of government whose citizens, while granted the right to vote, have little or no participation in the decision-making process of the government. The system of democracy we need is both direct and open, where the citizens decide how they should be governed. Thomas Jefferson said that when the people fear the government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. I'll take an extra large order of liberty, please. A good example of this tyranny is the surveillance state being put into place today. Think smart meters and cell phones. This is not to suss out homegrown terrorists as our government would have us believe. We are incrementally being trained to accept and love our police state. A solution. We must send a loud and clear message to the loved ones in the various police and military outfits to make sure that they know that they are actively taking part in the building and maintaining of a cruel, oppressive, and unreasonable system of governance. We can extend this plea to the government-funded and muzzled scientists. We need them to speak out about what we are doing to the uh, what we are what we are doing to the environment due to the tar sands projects. We need them to speak out about what is being sprayed on us from the chemtrails behind military planes. We need them to speak out about the energy sources available from the atmosphere above us. We need the truth. Yeah. Another disgusting trend in Canada today is the recent love affair between the Harper government and the state of Israel. As most of you know, according to international law, Israel's illegal treatment of the Palestinian peoples is a long-standing and systematic project of colonization and ethnic cleansing. The fairly recent Canadian parliamentary coalition to combat anti-Semitism made its intentions clear that any criticism of Israel's foreign policy by academics and media persons will be branded as anti-Semitic and thus the incitement of hatred. You likely remember British MP George Galloway being banned entry into Canada due to his outspokenness of Israel's apartheid treatment of the Palestinian peoples. This is not the peaceful and loving Canada we were once proud of. Another example of Canada's fall from grace to that of a pro-war anti-international law status is due to speaking engagements by senior U.S. Bush administration officials who have committed who have uh, admitted to war crimes. Bush, Cheney, and Rice should have been arrested upon entry into Canada for the crimes yeah. against humanity due to this latest war of terror based on the 9-11 lie. Yeah. However, in an attempt to be fair, I believe our governments have a tremendous amount of pressure on them from the international financial centers to continue to consolidate power and to strip the citizens of having any real influence in decision making. Our problems are not Canadian born, they are international. But this does not mean that we cannot discover and try to implement Canadian born solutions. We need politicians with backbones. I don't have any children of my own. But I often think about how I would or how we should 
teach our children a more accurate version of reality than the one they get on TV and in schools? At what age should they learn that our governments lie to us and cannot be trusted? For example, at what age should children be taught that 9-11 was an inside job? These words, by the way, are dedicated to my nieces, Emily and Katie. Uncle loves you very much. The more pessimistic of you might suggest that I am sugarcoating reality, that perhaps the new world order is, <clears throat> is so firmly set in place that resistance is futile, a waste of time. I can't say for sure if that is the case or not, but I'll be damned if I ever say that there is no hope that you should just go home and practice being a slave. Never! Never! Robert Louis Stevenson said that we should not judge each day by the harvest we reap, but by the seeds that we plant. We are planting seeds today, and we will continue to plant for the future we wish to leave to our children and grandchildren. It might not seem like it, but there are reasons to feel and to be optimistic today. It was not too many years ago that most people would roll their eyes if you brought up the problems in the official conspiracy theory of 9-11. That is not the case today. People are waking up. A little bit too slow for my liking, but we are waking up. People are organizing and movements are springing up and spreading. History is being written before our very eyes. And this event today is one of the authors in our story. Yeah. People are seeking ways to resist this corporate mindset so prominent in governments today. The Canadian Idle No More movement, for example, is a powerful and frightening threat to the government. The government's response seems to be to bring bigger guns to the party. This is the time that we will prove our integrity, our mindful livingness, our advantage over the greed and fear-based systems. We are showing our brothers and sisters dressed in riot gear that we are their brothers and sisters. In times of tyranny, the state loses its power when the military refuses their orders. And what about the Occupy movement? It went global. That was fun. This rally today is literally the child of that experience. I only wish I could predict the future activist adventures two years from now. We are a leaderless, bottom-up swell that will one day be celebrated for generations to come. Yes. Another example of tides turning in our favor, favor is the anti-Monsanto and GMO foods movement. People that were previously apolitical are now in a tizzy because they learned that they are eating poison. And then they learned <laughs> that the medical establishment is our enemy as well. That's right. The government will not surrender its power and return it to the people on their own. But through dedicated, peaceful, non-compliance and civil disobedience, they will be forced to concede defeat. This is when we will gain true participation in the decision-making process in our governments and in our lives. This is what we are seeking and that is how I believe it will happen. I want to thank the organizers of this event and to encourage activists taking part in social justice causes worldwide. And I want to highlight the importance of keeping love and hope in your hearts because we will have no chance whatsoever of, over, of overcoming these challenges if we do not. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, Raymond. Our next speaker, also keep it down from Nanaimo, She's a community activist, advocate and a political activist. Uh, she's here to talk about unity. Amanda Glum, or Grum, sorry, I apologize. Orum. Orum. Well, someone wrote a D here, it looks like to me. Orum. Sorry. Go, Amanda! 
I know where it's at. Well, that's okay, everybody. It's not going to be seen. So we'll just put it in the camera now. Sensible BC. Sensible BC, marijuana referendum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amanda Oram, and I am the regional organizer for the Sensible BC campaign. I have been organizing the Nanaimo riding, but also assisting and motivating others in, uh, in the campaign to get us right to the finish line so that we can be eligible to host a referendum on making cannabis the lowest police priority in BC. For the past few years, by being awake and active in the community, I have seen a major shift in, in reality and awareness. More people are willing to change. They are listening for solutions and for the techniques that have and have not worked. People sense something very strange is going on in the land. We have evolved into a high-tech, runaway machine that has no visions and infinite fuel to keep slugging through the messes of today with promises of being great for tomorrow. What have these mass messes brought us? They have brought us dead zones in the ocean, oil spills in our fresh water uh, sources, privatizations of our environmental lands where destruction of animal habitats are overlooked for overall greed of power and development. One major mess we have right now is our political system. We have allowed our politicians to prorogue, sell off our resources, and make unjust laws that only harm our community and our neighborhood. Not only do these lawmakers and pencil pushers push and tout the party line, they have made several injustices that continue on for decades before anyone is willing to take on the task of changing certain laws for the betterment of the masses. Grassroots activism is a key and a big solution to our issues at hand. Recently, I have seen three projects in Nanaimo that, um, that has been proposed. The community rallied. They met, they organized, they stayed in unity. Meanwhile, never backing down from their initial goal, protecting our lands. This is what is needed to unite the people and to change those laws and injustices to better ourselves. Those three projects, the first one was a privatization of our harbor. A top one percenter tried to come in and buy our harbor where two islands use it to connect to Nan into Nanaimo, where we have boaters living there. But you know what? The people united. They never gave up. They brought together people without borders and they united and continued and they pressured. The Sensible BC campaign is a grassroots movement run by the people. We have funded this with no provincial monies and run this with volunteers, people like you. No one is getting paid to run a referendum in BC and BC is already making history by uniting, organizing and working together to get the task done. With the Sensible BC campaign, the very first step is to amend the Police Act, where the police in BC, when they sign on as a, as a RCMP officer, they have to follow the Police Act. We are amending that to stop all searches, investigations, citations, and arrests related to cannabis. And that is where we bring our power to the masses. After the vote, we'll call on the federal government to exempt BC from the Controlled Substances Act. This will allow us the legal room to regulate and possibly tax cannabis sales in BC and to have a future of $10.5 billion in tax revenue. This will go on and fund our schools, our hospitals, for roads. There is no reason why we need an extra tax on top of the people. We have had a great time hearing the stories from those who signed the petition. And most of our signers are gray-haired, silver-lined people who literally rip the clipboard out of your hand to sign because they think this is such a great campaign. This is not the end of activism. Even if we hit our goal and we get each one topic activism subject fulfilled, we will continue on into the millennium. We will unite every time it is necessary to keep that amazing balance our lives need. 
We have fought for our rights. We are so lucky to live in Canada where we can speak without being shot. We can be free of associations. We can be anyone who we want to be. Find your place, be you, because that's the solution. Be yourself so that others can do the same. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Amanda. Uh, our next speaker, also from Nanaimo, she's a human rights a activist and advocate, and she's going to talk about chemtrails and personal solutions. Debbie Newhook, thank you. Hi there. Um, I'm really glad to be here, and I was delighted to be invited. Thanks very much, Josh, and everyone else who encouraged me to come down here and speak. I'm going to take you down the rabbit hole just a little deeper, okay? Because what I'm going to talk about is freaking scary, okay? Now, I know you're all awake. I know you know about the chemtrails. Okay, do you know what's in them? Nanoparticulates, this man over here, he's awake. Okay, that's how they manipulate the weather. Okay, they put it up there, it's gotta come down. Red and white blood cells. Now, where's it going? It's in the air we breathe, it's in the water we drink, it's in the food we eat. It's in the pets that are running around your house. I know this. Okay, have you heard of Morgellons? Yeah. Okay, good. We're awake. Okay, but have you heard of Morgellons without lesions? You've got no signs of it. That's what happened to me. Okay, I, only I was chasing an infection around my head. And I go, oh my God and I don't trust doctors. Okay, found myself a naturopath in Nanaimo. He confirms for me that I have nanotechnology running through my body. Oh my God. Okay, so he gets me on a detox. Lo and behold, I go in a, on a detox. I'm de detoxing my skin. I mean detoxing the internal organs everywhere and out from my skin comes the same things that the Morgellons people are showing us on the internet. I talk more with my naturopath. I go, Don, is this happening to everyone? He goes, yes. He says, you wouldn't believe how many people I treat in Nanaimo with it. He says, I don't tell them. I tell them it's pathogens. We're, they're dumping pathogens on us, but they're, most of the people aren't awake, so he just continues to treat them for this. We are all contaminated and you have got to get this shit out of you. It is for population control. It is to make you sick. It is to cause cancer. They can d manipulate this nanotechnology with frequency. It is used to track people. Ask me. I've been out there for... 10 years when I discovered I got put on this hit list for surveillance. Well, this nanotechnology in my body, I am the RFID. Now I want this shit out. I want to be free. So what do you do? Everybody's got it, just it's not activated in everybody. Now, some of the people it's activated in are the hypersensitive people. Hypersensitive to EMF. Somehow it got activated because they were exposed to too much EMF. So now they experience all these EMF sensitive things. One, that you get headache, the blurred vision, fog, brain fog, electricity running through your body. Okay, I go on a detox. A year later, guess what? Suddenly, I'm not sensitive to EMF. Well, how about that? I go talk to my naturopath again. So, all these people who are sensitive to EMF, Don, is it the nanotech? And he goes, yes. Okay, folks, they are the canaries in the coal mine. Those people who have been telling us that 
the excessive EMF out there is harming them. They are telling us, yes, it's really happening, okay? This nanotechnology comes from the chemtrails, it's falling down, we're breathing it in, you've got to get it out, there is ways to do it. You do it naturally, okay? Have a look, Dr. Mercola, online. He's a good one to follow, start detoxing, folks. Okay, another one is the Health Ranger, Natural News, follow him. He's actually talked a little bit about the nanotechnology in one of his more out there. He's, he's coming a little more out and talking about uh, some of the more stuff that's down the rabbit hole. Okay, other solutions. Obviously, you heard it. Get rid of the GMOs. Don't support them. Get on board um, the group GE Free whatever, Nanaimo. I hear that they're doing it in another city somewhere on Vancouver Island. I forget we were talking about it on the way, way here. I'm sorry, I can't remember what city. But anyway, I think it was Parksville. Oh yeah, GE Free. So we got to stop We've got to stop supporting these big corporations, the food corps. Support your local farmer. Grow your own food. Buy local. Buy local, yes. Local supporting locals. Forget the big corporations. You've got to get rid of them. They're part of the problem. They're, they're controlling us. Okay, solutions. Cannabis. Okay, jump on the cannabis solution. Okay, I'm taking cannabis oil now and I'm taking the juice. I'm going to hammer this, this stuff in my body and I'm going to get rid of it and I'm going to be back here next year and I'm going to tell you that it's gone. Yeah. yeah! Now I want everyone else out there to, to, to really look at, at your diet. We need to educate ourselves about our own body, how it works, and how to feed it properly. They don't teach us that in school. In fact, they don't even teach it in medical school. You know, the, the doctors only get 12 hours of nutrition in their whole education. I know more than they do about how the body works. So I'm taking charge of my body. Go see naturopaths. You know what? They're waking up. That was the first thing I said when I sat down in, in, his, in his office. I said, do you know about the chemtrails? Yes, he said. I said, okay, we're friends. Okay, folks, I think I'm just going to wrap it up. I'm going to say one more thing. Love is the answer. Yeah. And um, detox, detox, detox. Seek out naturopaths. Forget mainstream medical. They're not here to help us. I missed it. And also, too, if you work, don't pay your freaking taxes. Watch them squirm. I do it. I haven't paid my freaking taxes for... Once I realized I was put on this hit list, and who put me on this hit list, that was it, forget it. Man, once, once I found out I had more gallons without lesions, well, forget it. You're not seeing any of my money. Okay, there's a solution. Personals. Stop buying, stop supporting, quit paying your income tax. Adios, folks. Thanks very much. Hey guys, that was awesome, eh? Let's hear it for Rose one more time. Just to add a little note on the Monsanto chemtrail uh, conspiracy. They are and have patented a aluminum resistant seed. So go figure that, right? Anyway, our next speaker coming to you from Victoria here is Ryan Olson. Uh, he's an independent investigative journalist here in Victoria, and he's founder of dissembling.org. Uh, I visited that site myself, really good information on there, so if anybody is interested in that, definitely look it up. And uh, he's going to be talking about social engineering today, so without further ado, Ryan Olson. Hey, Ryan! Okay, that's Olson. Um, so my topic today is about social engineering and for those of you out there who uh, may not necessarily believe in such a thing, um, the reality of social engineering is that you have to pay a lot of attention to what's going on around you in order to figure it out. You have to be Teutonic with your documentation. You have to film everything. You have to uh, uh, reference and classify the data and organize it in such a way that you can disseminate it to other people and that's basically what I do with my website. Now I'll give you an example of social engineering. Um, just uh, last month in September there was a, a lady who received an $81 fine for leaving her car window open 
And uh, uh, if you look at the news report that was done by CTV, um, that you'll, you'll see that she was issued the ticket, but then it was turned into a warning. The reason why it was turned into a warning is because they don't want a court challenge on this. This is just to condition people, to get them used to uh, this brand new tyrannical law that uh, is a misinterpretation of the Motor Vehicle Act. Because inside the Motor Vehicle Act, it discusses how, how one secures their vehicle. It, it's supposed to be secured from rolling away when it's parked. It's supposed to be secured from unauthorized use when it's parked. It says nothing about securing the contents inside your vehicle. It says nothing about rolling up the windows. And quite frankly, windows are not secure. There's a skeleton key around every corner. It's called a rock. <clears throat> so this level of social engineering is quite per pervasive. Um, what I've discovered in my research is there's something that's called the collective. And the collective is uh, an entity, like this one here, an entity that makes decisions for other people. And uh, the funny thing about this collective is it can make snap decisions that uh, can seemingly deprive people of their rights. Um, now I'll give you another example of such a thing. Um, uh, there's a video of uh, Greg Hill being harassed by anarchists and they mention the collective. And the collective has decided that he can't be in a public space, so therefore he must leave. Um, this is how tyranny unfolds in our public spaces. This is how tyranny shuts down debate and ostracizes people who are only around to speak the truth and tell people how to wake up. The collective has an agenda and a plan for us all. And if you don't like that plan, well, you know what, the collective is just going to push you off into the corner and make sure that you're gagged and silenced. Social engineering is so pervasive that we all ascribe to a political system that at its very core was designed to get us to do their bidding. Um, as you can see, this church of politics behind me um, dictates to the public all these brand new laws. In fact, what I would like to question is why they would come out and say that they have a plan for brand new identification with embedded RFID tags, uh, linked to our banking accounts and credentials. Um, it, it, it's, it's almost the same thing as the mark of the beast. I mean, just short of getting an RFID tattoo on your hand or forehead. RFID is dangerous because it can track you anywhere you go. And I say this because, well, there's Wi-Fi nodes all over the place, and we don't know how secure they are. There's public Wi-Fi's going up all the time. What are, they, what are they doing this for? Is it for free internet for everybody? No, it's to track you. It's to track you and classify everything that you do so that these idiots that have already mismanaged society and created the lunacy that we're living in in the first place can micromanage you some more. <clears throat> no way. <laughs> Another issue that I have with this government is they have this suggestion of sustainable development. And of course, everybody has to sustainably be developed their way. If you come up with an alternative and you choose to sustainably develop yourself, guess what? They don't like that very much. They'll, they'll, they'll do whatever it takes to make you go away, to shut you up, to silence your message. If anybody has been paying attention to Agenda 21 in the Wildlands Project, it's perfectly clear that the, by, very design, by the very design of the non-binding system, it's not really non-binding, but uh, I can get into that some other, uh, other time, um, non-binding system, that restricts people from land. Now, people would need that land in order to grow their own food. They would need the space in order to produce for themselves so that they can sustain themselves. If you want to avoid GMO, the easiest solution is to grow your own food. Simple as that. Yeah. If you want clean, fluoride-free water, the simplest solution is to filter it yourself. If you don't want a Mr. Floaty Turd Inhabiting your neighborhood, treat your own waste. 
it's possible for individuals to come up with a solution via open source to sustainably develop themselves without this tyranny. And that's what we must do. We must help each other figure out a solution or these, these tyrants will figure one out for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, spoken like a uh, well-researched individual and um, really appreciate those words. Uh, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Bruni. She's an activist uh, of historic proportions and we're lucky to have her here. So uh, thank you for being here. Bernie Bernie, great granddaughter of She Who Knows from the Ne Menas First Nations. Born in the village of Sediment on Newcastle Island, and Nanaimo is my place, and Vancouver Island is my world. The most beautiful island that ever there is. We live in a paradise. We have trees, green, uh, red oak, and uh, Gary Oak and Arbutus that you see never anywhere in the world and we need to start taking control of our land. The ind indigenous people have been on this island for over a thousand years. Captain Vancouver, I think that's him up there, only 200 years ago sailed around Vancouver Island, charted a few maps, and gave it to the British Crown. And they registered it, and the island became a British colony. I think that's kind of like a land takeover for whoever has the biggest guns. Yeah. And you know what? I'm really glad that I'm living in the times today because with social media, we're a community again and we can make change. Now, you know this whole thing is corrupt because the, the ministers of uh, legislature assembly, all they do is wag their little finger to vote yes or no and no one's looking after business. Century 21 is developing in Nanaimo and tearing down a beaver pond with a road, bird species lost, 200-year-old trees cut down. My God, there's going to be nothing left but Mars. And you know what? There's a solution, and it can happen in the next election. Think about it. All you have to do, just think of Vancouver Island, all you have to do is vote for an independent person in every area. That'll be dead to the party system. Dead, dead, dead. And you know what? The thing with an independent person, if after 18 months you don't like them, well, you can vote them out. Now there'll be a whole bunch of shuffle go buffle. But if we get that word out, Vancouver Island, we have beautiful farmland. We can make growing our own local organic food a great big business and go at all the restaurants. There'd be money and food and wealth for everyone. Take the profit out of the land because I dream, I dream to see a land where one day we actually have two democracy. You know what that is? That's where every one of you, every one of you, doesn't just vote for the 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 the. You vote on an issue. Yeah. You vote on things that pertain to your life because you know what? I believe in the power of good. I believe that most of us are good. And you know what? We don't need a degree to know what the rightest thing is to do. So hey, think Vancouver Island. Maybe we'll just be like the French and break away. Why not? We'll just float out. We can set an example to the world. I believe in Vancouver Island. I believe in you. Power to the people. Well, that's what I call passion, right there. Yeah. All right, so uh, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Uh, her name is Coral. She's a local here in Victoria. She's a uh, strong young parent and a community builder. And she's here to talk about imbalance in culture. So without further ado, Coral. Actually, a little lower. Today I'd like to address and speak on the issue of what I believe to be the modernized attack on fertility. 
And the reason I call it this is because it does not appear to be direct, like maybe old traditional ancient male-dominated religions and practices. What I'm referring to are things like billboards and advertisements, subliminal messaging and teachings in schools, things we have been conditioned not to question, question things that greatly inhibit human consciousness. I originally wrote about this with young parents in mind, as I recognize there are a lot of stereotypes and negative notions towards being a young parent. And this is very damaging to our culture as a whole. The modernized attack on fertility and in turn life encompasses a lot more than just fertility. For everything comes from this ever birthing energy. Anything alive, growing, this affects all that is. Man, woman and child. This greatly affects our youth. When one is hurt, all is hurt. We as a culture do not celebrate, honor, or hold any regard for fertility, pregnancy, and childbearing. We teach as though having children is problematic. This out-of-sight, out-of-mind war creates great disbalance in our society. It's as though the creating and birthing energy of our place is being inhibited and suppressed. Why not celebrate and honor fertility? Why not teach this to our children? Reasons why I don't think it's having children that's a problem of this world which seemingly many kinds of media outlets can impress on us with stigmas and disinfo about fertility, the developing human, and raising children. We all know overpopulation is myth, more like created illusion to scare you and make you feel the need to compete for life worthiness and quality of life, which is just ridiculous, and to create illusion that some life is of more value or less value than others, to impair self-esteem, which is only one minor aspect towards this attack on fertility, on life. I don't think childbearing is the problem. I don't think being a young parent is the problem not such as it's out to be, made out to be. Things being completely unapproachable and inaccessible for young parents and children in such a way that connection with nature and any natural acts could be deemed illegal or something you should be labeled a terrorist for or even just looked, up, looked at as unacceptable social behavior, that is a problem. Examples, bed sharing, breastfeeding, natural medicines, midwives, homeschooling, deciding not to vaccinate. I don't think Ch childbearing is the problem and I don't think being a young parent is the, is the problem. <clears throat> I think it's the way that society has been conditioned and is currently being taught to deal with childbearing and parenting that is problematic. Being a young parent is a problem, isn't a problem at all, but the system dicking around with our natural rights sure screws things up for children and parents that only want to grow. It doesn't cost money to have a child. You do not have to pay for the right to give birth. You don't have to validate your decisions and choices for life or to bear life. You do not have to va validate yours or your child's existence. That's crazy. And the system and system slaves should be ashamed for continuously imprinting these notions on vulnerable young minds. Children need food, water, shelter, warmth, community, and mainly love, which is all being stripped from us. We're being convinced that we need to struggle for these simple gifts, our natural rights. These are not something we have to slave for. This is greatly illusion set before us to instill us with such a fear and shame and impaired so sense of self-worth that we become dependent on the just allowable resources that our system may choose to give us, only to be deceived and convinced that we always need to pay back more, only to become in debt. Greater debt than just that of anything financial, but debt of energy and of heart, debt, debt of mentality, of psyche, and in turn of any and all human emotions and energies. We are being convinced that we need to invest our minds and emotions, our energy bodies, into the system that only wants to keep us low and will. The most vulnerable citizens are not hard to keep in these cycles. Someone is very aware of this. We have been convinced that Earth resources are lacking and couldn't possibly sustain us. These are all lies. Our Mother Earth is very selfless and giving to our every need and also very abundant when we choose to honor and respect her grounds and gifts, taking and sharing only what we need. I understand how it can appear as problematic to not be fitting in these boxes so kindly made for our slavery. I see how that can screw up someone's plan. Let me tell you people, children are not the problem. The way we raise them and deal with their natural behaviors and cries as though they're unfit to be here is the core issue. Yes. Our system in all reality is unfit for children. That is all. The system we have so blindly succumbed to is unfit for allowing healthy growth and development of our children. If you cannot see this, then you, my friend, unfortunately have been majorly distracted. We are pushed and taught in so many ways that children should and need to be as separate from us as early as possible. We start them on the great divide early in life 
as early as any individual can be deceived. We teach them that our earth and healing waters, nature, the woods, animals, rocks, dirt, the weather, are scary things that we need to separate ourselves from to avoid harm. We teach them disconnect with earth and nature in all her splendor. We teach them early that certain aspects in our culture are more geared to one sex or gender than another. We teach them that according to sex they are born, they are, that they are to costume and paint and embellish themselves a certain way different than others, and that certain colors are more suitable for them than others, which is just crazy. Colors are not born with genitals. Even if they were, this is crazy. We teach them to divide early as though their future in life is dependent on the ego they develop, that if allowing, and the chances for this are great, our system conditions them to be ruled by. Worse than any of this, we teach them that there is such a thing as too much connection, too much love, and to be as independent as early as possible, not allowing for the natural human needs of connection and love being met. We are starving our children and depriving them of the basic human needs that are necessary for optimum growth and development, not just physically, mentally and emotionally, but also spiritually. I so often hear people say that, oh well, this is just the way we've created our system to be now, so you need to learn to work with it. Why not a different approach? Why not trying the world needs to learn to work with children, birth, fertility, family and health? Why not change the system so that fertility, infant and children's health and growth are priority and main focus? Do we not collectively understand yet that all of our lives and future of this planet is in our children's hands? Whether you have children or not, this should be obvious truth by now. I don't think it's that hard to do, just a matter of some learning to let go to the feelings of entitlement they have been made to believe they have over this place, over these people. That saying it takes a village to raise a child, this is true and is also okay. There is no shame in needing human connection to raise a human, or at least there never should be. However, a developed society is created such that we are so divided. You need to do this on your own, all on your own. Puts you down low and alone. Feelings of helplessness and disconnect from humanity and earth will surely rise amongst youth, young parents, children and infants. You need to guess and struggle to connect back with our nature, our intuition, how to raise a child. Either that or when you do need help, you are looked at as a bum off the system for needing outreach support, pure community support or any other kinds of support that are geared towards children, prenatal, postpartum or mental health. It is seemingly a drag on the system and all the people. To need or to ask for help or support was something that naturally humans would have no problem living with and alike. With compassion and connection with one another, with sharing and wisdoms of our place. This is where we've gone wrong as a society, as a species. We have not been putting the children first. We've become afraid of what? We choose to put consumerism and ego first. We've unknowingly renounced our natural rights. We've sacrificed and our, ourselves and our children. For what? It's never too late to reclaim your humanity, your dignity, your natural rights, your energy body, to claim responsibility for yours and your child's well-being and health. It's never too late. It's all on you. Claim it because if you do not pay attention and you remain distracted, it will be taken from you. The power is all you. I would like to reference a great book I read that is all about healing and reconnecting with our natural gifts. It's called Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder by Richard Love. Today's kids are increasingly disconnected from the natural world, says child advocacy expert Love. Even as research shows that thoughtful exposure of youngsters to nature can be a powerful form of therapy for attention deficit disorder and other mal maladies, instead of passing summer months hiking, swimming and telling stories around the campfire, children these days are more likely to attend computer camps or weight loss camps. As a result, Love says, they've come to think of nature as more of an abs abstraction than a reality. Indeed, a 2002 British study reported that eight-year-olds could identify Pokemon characters far more easily than they could name otter, beetle and oak tree. Gathering thoughts from parents, teachers, researchers, environmentalists, and other concerned parties, Love argues for a return to an awareness of an, of an appreciation for our natural world. Not only can nature teach kids science and nurture their creativity, he says, nature needs its children. Where else would its future stewards come from? In closing, I'd also like to say that connecting back to our roots, back to nature, earth, and all, our, all her gifts, has such a huge healing and empowering impact on us, all ages. Allowing yourself to be grounded in nature stabilizes your energy body, your frequencies, and in turn your physical body and mind. Let's get back to our roots. Let's honor our ground and earth cycles. This place has a lot to offer and we have a lot to be grateful for. Let's try giving to our earth and all the people our, as our home is selfless and giving to us. Let's choose compassion, choose peace, and choose love while we're here. Let's try it and see what really happens. Okay.
That was great, Coral. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've just got a very few speakers left. Um, we're just going to wait for Paul to change his, uh, his tape here. I don't want people to be discouraged that there's not a huge crowd here because there's a huge crowd right in there, right in there, right in there, right in there. We have access to the internet and to television. And once this stuff is filmed and up online and on television, thousands and thousands and thousands of people are going to hear these powerful words, these words for change. So we're ready to go. We just got a few speakers left. Uh, the next one I'd like to introduce is the co-chair of We Are Change Victoria, powerful champion for liberty, and Ron Paulaholic, Greg Hill. Thanks, Josh. You did out me as a Ron Paulaholic. That's how I got engaged in this, uh, this fight. And that's really when I woke up about five years ago. Um, I saw a film called Aerosol Crimes. And that was one of the first documentaries that uh, really sparked my interest as to alternative media. Uh, then I came across the movie Zeitgeist. And from that point, uh, when I learned about 9-11, my world was shattered. There was no turning back from that point. I started researching every person that was in that film. I started learning about the money and banking system, and I was looking for some honesty. But before I get into all that, I do want to reflect on somebody that we lost this year that's been very special to me. Uh, it's been very special uh, to uh, people all over the world. And that is our fallen soldier, John Boncor. He goes by the name Splitting the Sky or Dakajawea. John is a, a leader among leaders. He was, uh, he was the only person charged in New York City during the Attica Rebellion. Uh, he was uh, defended by um, Ramsey Clark. And he has been part of the Gustafson Lake standoff. And he's been a huge outspoken advocate for finding the people that perpetrated the wars and aggression and profiteering behind 9-11. And I'd ask that people please, please look into who Splitting the Sky is. He is a profound person. His legacy will live forever. And he is a, he is a local BC uh, born native. So in today's solutions, we've heard many things from many wonderful speakers, champions for freedom, champions of liberty, people who are espousing the individual, not the collective. Because when you are strong as an individual, you become a strongest link in your community. You build your community by being the best that you can be yourself. I have some solutions that I've come across over the course of the last year that I'd like people to maybe take home and digest and Google and reference themselves. Uh, some amazing technological advancements that we're fortunate, to, fortunate enough to, to, to see coming to fruition. Some of the biggest challenges we face, including voting. We've heard about direct democracy, but what about the vote fraud that goes on through these electronic voting systems? or even the counting of paper ballots. Well, there is a TED Talk by David Bismarck who has created a fraud-proof voting machine. I encourage people to definitely check out David Bismarck on TEDx. There's also ways that we can create heirloom seed banks at our local libraries. If you Google that, you can find out ways that we can capture our own personal health freedom and support others in our community by creating local uh, sustainable food systems where we don't have to rely on big agribiz or big commercial groceries, grocery stores, we can rely on our own heirloom seed banks and we can introduce it at public libraries. We also have the degradation of our ocean water Globally, and some people may have heard of the Pacific Garbage Patch, which is all of the plastics and garbage that have been dumped into our oceans have dissolved. It's, if you could imagine a, a massive garbage patch, 
you would think of large pieces of debris floating around the ocean. Well, this garbage patch, they say, is as big as Texas, but it's actually 10 to 15 times larger than that. And it's not big pieces of debris, it's actually particulate that has been dissolved into the water, and it needs to be filtered. There is a young 19-year-old boy named Boyens Slat who has started the Ocean Cleanup Foundation that has found a way to use electrochemically mediated seawater through a desalinization process and you can learn more through the University of Texas. That is a solution that we can use to clean up our oceans, which is so vital to our Earth systems. We also talk about the energy crisis. So much reliance upon petrochemicals, the tar sands, uh, coal. Well, we have access to hemp. Yes. They promoted hemp 100 years ago and through the 50s. Hemp is one of the most resource-rich agricultural products known to man. They would pro they've been promoting this for decades, especially throughout World War II. The government even put out commercials encouraging people to grow hemp. It's renewable. It's sustainable. It grows 15, 20 feet tall. You can cut it down twice a year. You don't have to cut down trees. You can use it for textiles. You can use it for carpet. You can use it for food, medicine. And you can use it for, petro for petroleum. You can power an autom automobile. You can do almost anything with with hemp. It is such an important key piece of the fabric of our solution and our prosperity as a human race. And that's why it's so important that we have people from Sensible BC here today talking about the decriminalization referendum that's going on right now. We need people signing that and getting involved as canvassers across the province. They're doing really well, but we need that extra boost. We're halfway through the campaign, so please go to sensiblebc.ca and find out more on how you can get engaged. We also talk about the other pieces of the energy crisis. And did you know that we're coming up with new ways, with new supercapacitors, and with elements that are available around the world called graphene, where you could charge your cell phone in five seconds. Not five hours, but five seconds. Through this new t emerging technology, we can use that to power our homes, we can use that to power almost everything in a much more efficient way. Instead of utilizing this electrical grid, which BC Hydro is milking everybody and milking our pocketbooks. We've had enough of BC Hydro, we're going to turn to individual solutions and be responsible for ourselves. So go out there, take a look at Google Graphene. The last thing I wanted to leave with everybody today is some solutions on how you can get engaged as a, as a local activist in the new media revolution. One of the things that I've done personally over the years is fake it till I make it. So I created my own press pass. I have my photo on here. I got the We Are Change logo. This, I put a little lanyard around my neck and I got it laminated at Staples. Cost me five bucks. But this has got me in to the press room to confront Michael Ignatieff about those wars that have been going on overseas. I've confronted Jack Layton. I've confronted Thomas Mulcair on the war in Libya. I've confronted Justin Trudeau on the use of depleted uranium in Syria and in Libya. This little press pass for five bucks got me in behind the scenes and we've used that on Freedom Free For All television. I absolutely encourage everybody to make their own. Another wicked thing that we have a ton of fun doing is pretty much every Friday night, we go out and we will chalk the town. You can go to Toys R Us, you can go to anywhere, dollar store, and buy a pack of chalk, and go down in front of the bars and nightclubs, and, when the, and there's all these people out and about. You can use chalk on the sidewalk. It's, um, you can get biodegradable chalk, costs pennies on the dollar, and you can see messages and share messages in a unique way that most people aren't used to seeing. Instead of seeing a billboard uh, up on the highway or, or uh, watching a TV ad, if you put chalk on the sidewalk, people are going to stop and go, whoa. And what we, ha what we find is that people are actually going, 
hey, that's you guys that are chalking? And we go, yeah, you want some? They're like, yeah, sure. Totally, well, here's some chalk. Spread the word, spread the love, find some unique ways that you can get engaged. And that is definitely a big one. It is all incumbent upon each of us as individuals. We are all leaders. And I find that when you know your individual values and become a values-based leader, that is how you spread the most influence in your community and the most influence in your family. And that's how you find the greatest amount of success in your own personal life. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to the fourth annual Freedom and Solutions Rally. Thank you very much, Josh. And uh, to all, a blessed day. Powerful, powerful stuff. One of our last speakers today is a local right to sleep activist, a local monk. He's been here the last two years as well. David Arthur Johnson. Johnston, sorry. David Arthur Johnston. Thank you. Hola, hola, good day. Uh, I'm gonna do my best not to say um. I do not have a plan and I do not have a theory. I know that any good thing that needs to be done, there's a monster that's gonna say you can't do it and it will do every horrible thing to not let you do that thing. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, and so my spiel, my shtick today is about getting comfortable with your mortality. Because ultimately, if you want to do the right thing, someone's going to say, if you continue doing that, I'm going to kill you. Uh, and so that's where we're at. But there's, there's no getting what needs to be done done if you think that fear is a natural human thing and that you're allowed to be afraid. Uh, same goes for anger. And all that goes back to, you have to figure it out for yourself. I, I can give you all the, the little nuances about why you don't have to be afraid and how there's no such thing as evil. Uh, but then that just means that you have to have a full-on Buddha enlightenment. And most people want to think that they're average Joe, and so they don't go that far. Essentially, what needs to be done is you have to stop using money, you have to stop paying taxes, uh, you have to treat it like a war. When generally or metaphorically or whatever, women and children go to the grandparents, stuff like that. You don't get your own life anymore. The time for vacations is over. Uh, we're in a hell. Uh, and the only way out of hell is to rather be dead than be in hell. So patience be with us, uh, because we can talk all we want about reform, vote, and, and guaranteed livable income, uh, but the real fact is, is that we're all slaves, and the other real fact is, is that we're all angels. Uh, and so there's, you're being held hostage, uh, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you are complicit in the horror with every cent that's spent. You're enabling this world to continue. And then the, you know, the, the ridiculous notion of just stopping using money. Well, yeah, everyone should be homeless now. It's, it's madness. And so that's what I say. Uh, if you're in a vulnerable state, then get off the front line. If you are able-bodied, and not afraid of dying, then stop doing the things that's killing everything. Uh, I love you and patience be with us all. You, you are the Buddha. If you want the truth, you can figure it out in your own head. Uh, there's, there's, there's no such thing as choice. And that the thought in your head is the only thought that could have been there and it's been destined forever in this beginningless universe. And that's not just some fancy stuff, it's actual, actual. Uh, there's only one thing that exists, and you are a finger of it. So, patience be with us. There is no death. What else? Oh, uh, 
for good posture. Uh, just always pretend like you're in water up to your nose. And uh, what else? Like, you know what you have to do. You have to figure out what you are, love truth. Because of this fear and anger, hostage taking, the, the button pushing and the directing of people, if you were not afraid, then this aspect of God has to step up its game. And so it becomes less sneaky and more brutal. And so you have to invite the entirety of all that brutality. You, you invite the devil to do its worst because death is better than being a slave. It's all logic. And, and so, you know, no one becomes the Buddha overnight or remembers what they are overnight. So I'm saying these words and hoping that they'll sink in eventually over time. All this horrible stuff is going to continue happening. The New Brunswick, the cops and people who think pride is a virtue. And so patience be with us. Because it's all a lie. The cops are crazy. And the taxpayers are enabling the whole thing. So it's like... There's no one to blame, we were all born into it. At the same time, the, like all those were horrible. Uh, and so patience be with us because we're also angels. Love you all. Thank you, David. Uh, Two more speakers. One of our last ones is Rainbow John from Hornby Island. He's been an activist since 1956, and he's going to talk to us about the Chief Commissioner of the RCMP and how to talk to him. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, I think as the gentleman that preceded me invited us to all, uh, all understand that in fact we are souls. We are souls in what appears to me to be an eternity. And we put, when people say, well, how can you possibly say that? I would say, well, anybody and most women who've had children would agree with me that there is a power that seems to exceed our capacities as individuals. And this power appears to be now, after a long time of criticizing what has gone wrong in this country, as a power for goodness. A power not for revolution, as this gentleman referred to, but a power for evolving ourselves as souls. And a part of what the gentleman referred to, the idea of, first of all, we cannot uh, penetrate the mystic realms until we pass through death, of course, is, is one of those things that uh, is meant not only in a practical sense, that is, of dying and losing your body and rotting in the grave and coming back, but it also means that we die to what is old and we look up for what is new and what is purposeful and what we do. And so I suggest that in spite of accepting the fact that we are in a de facto police state, I would like to address as a visiting gentleman for, for more than 50 odd years studying Canada as an activist engaged in most of the activities that were not political but philosophical in form because I think politics is a low order of thinking because it's selfish, it's based on ego and I do believe that the ideal, the one I've been offering as a solution now in, in, in the court here even, is a none of the above on the ballot. A very simple option to having elect even well-spoken great orator politicians but common people who then, to prove a real evolutionary leap forward in the structure of government, would adopt the forms of the Aboriginal people who were here before us and on whose lands I stand and with whom I have stood for many years against the colonization which they have tolerated. It is high time that we spoke up for reality, a reality on which we have our feet, a reality where we are on Mother Earth, we're under Father Son, or if you prefer, we're under Mother Son, we're on our Fatherland. It is where we bear our children that becomes 
our native connection. My children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren are born, born on this soil. And I do believe they have native rights. But before they have native rights, we must have an honorable settlement with the Aboriginal people. And for that, I have fought in this country for more than 25 years. And I have seen no result because nobody came back and said, well, what might possibly be honorable? Well, I'll tell you what honorable is when we're no longer slaves. And we're no longer slaves under an oppression, military police state that we have been in for most of the last 50 years that I've been here. And before, if you look into history, it is time now for the common people to raise their voices together from the west coast to the east coast and say to the commissioner of the RCMP, are you an honorable man who serves the purposes of the people, the peaceful people, of Canada, or are you just another fraud representing these foreign monetary interests who stole from the people of Canada in 1972 the appropriate use of the Bank of Canada, which was the People's Bank of Canada, which was set up by a man called Grattan McGeer in Vancouver in 1934. Two of the men who were trustees at that time are now still alive. Exactly. What? And I'll tell you who they are. Well, one I can tell you. The other one still remains secret. I don't know, but I do know people that do know. One of them is Chrétien, and it happened in 1972. I used to blame Trudeau because I was no great friend of his, but I did meet him a couple of times. And I'll tell you what, I know now that the pressure that man was under as Prime Minister and the fact that the RCMP did not stand by him when he said, no, let us not perpetrate this fraud of the Bank of Canada. Let us deal with this now. Let us say no to the Mafia. Let us say no to the FLQ. Let us say no to these people because I am supposed to be, if nothing else, keeping this country together. And when the RCMP turned away, because I happened to be the man that blew the whistle. I went to the RCMP in Ottawa after going to the RCMP in Richmond and after going to the Governor General and saying, if you allow this fraud to happen, you are enslaving the people of Canada because they were given their freedom in 1934 and you're stealing from them because nobody, nobody was afraid Nobody was afraid enough that they were ready to die for the truth that that Bank Act should be enforced to this day. And any government that does not support that does not understand anything about money. And what you should know about money is the biggest myth that was ever invented to enslave people. And what this gentleman said, we cannot move directly Oh, I am foaming at the lips. I'm sorry, I don't usually get that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, excuse me. <clears throat> anyway, a uh, long story short, uh, I, I think we should take this opportunity while we're apparently speaking to more than one or two people to say to uh, the new commissioner of the RCMP, who according to press reports, has now instituted uh, a, a new division it's called A Division, oddly enough. I don't know whether they didn't have one that, that before, but they do now. And, and the, the, uh, the, the, what he said, in fact, in at least what the press reported, uh, was that this was intended to rout out corruption in Canada. Well, I, because I think, you know, like the commissioner of the RCMP might try to think, and I think, my God, what have I said? How on earth am I going to do that? Everything in Canada is corrupt. You know, every secret society, every secret, it's a corruption by somebody against somebody else. It's taking advantage of somebody. We have to get past the secret thing. We have to get into a common understanding that we're all divine beings. And we're here on an eternal journey. And if we do any good in the time we're here, then my uh, tendency is to believe things can only get better. Thank you for your patience and uh, I hope it didn't... Uh, get too wound up there. Thank you. I'm very wound up, by the way. I should be angry, 
but I look, I look for humor because humor can sometimes, uh, you know, lead us to a better path. And I thank the gentleman over here who is a monk. Uh, I'm a reverend brother in the Church of the Universe. I was made that because in 1978 I went to the Supreme Court of Canada after growing it publicly in Richmond. I uh, did my own law, got to the Supreme Court, did three months in the Islama at Ocala uh, for civil disobedience and so on. So, you know, well, I tell you, once you get into this game of, of struggling against the oppressor, it's, it's, it, 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 it seems to me there's no way back. If I could, there's a couple of times when I felt like I could escape, but somehow or other, that energy for truth and justice and love keeps coming back. And as long as that comes back, we don't have to take up arms. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. I got 10 on my quad again this day. I got 10 on my thing. Thank you. Wow. There's usually one speaker that really kind of rattles me each year. Last year it was David Arthur Johnston. This year it's you, sir. Jamie, don't get me wrong. You got me too, man. I'd like to introduce our final speaker this afternoon. He is a concerned father. He is the co-chair of We Are Change Victoria. He is a champion of liberty. And he is on nearly every ballot of every election, whether it's local, provincial, or federal. The champion, Josh Steffler. Thank you, thank you. We've had a lot of great speakers, a lot of great solutions. I don't have a speech written, um, and I shouldn't say um, I'll try not to. <laughs> we only have a uh, limited time left. I know that we've gone over. I want to thank everyone for coming out, everyone for rallying behind freedom, behind liberty, behind justice, honesty, integrity. We've heard so many solutions today. But without you, they're just empty words. The solutions aren't going to come from any problem, from any collective group, from any position of power. They're going to come from you. You're going to walk away from here and you're going to do something. Whether it's about GMOs that you heard, or it's about monetary reform, or it's about voting with your dollars. Unions aren't going to change anything. Political parties aren't going to change anything. Social organizations, even like We Are Change as a group, we're not going to change anything. You are the only one that is going to change anything. With your actions, with your words. It's an awesome echo. <laughs> what is freedom? Is freedom defined by what other people tell you you're free to do? Or is freedom defined by you? By what you're allowed to do? Are you free if somebody else can tell you you can't say no? Is it your property if somebody can force a smart meter on the side of your wall? Is it your wall? Is it your labor and your income when somebody can take 15, 20, 30 percent just for earning it? <coughs> Excuse me. Are they your children if a government agency can come and take them away because of the decisions you've made? Is it your city? when your politicians can dictate where you can put chalk on sidewalk, where you can assemble, where you can exercise your rights to free speech? It's not. We are not free. We may think we are. We've got a long way to go. But through empowered individuals 
and empowered actions of those said individuals, we will get closer and closer to freedom every day. We are the masters of our own destiny. We are the ones that make our choices. And we're only as free as we let ourselves be. Civil disobedience may, look be, may be looked down upon, but people do this every day. Do you follow every law? No. People walk across the street, not on crosswalks. Oh my God, they're not following the law. People get involved in black markets. People get involved in under the table interactions because they are not free. If you were free, you wouldn't have to hide these things. You wouldn't have to worry about some authority coming down on you even though there's no victim, no crime. Most of us behave in completely lawful ways and yet break the law every day. Government has become a cancerous growth on society. It is taking away our liberties and our freedoms with every stroke of the pen, with every new law, with every new, they're not laws, with every new statute, with every new bill. We're a long ways from freedom, but we're gonna get there. We may not get there today, tomorrow, but I'll be here next year and I hope you all will be with me next year, and the year after, and the year after. We look to promote individual solutions to all these problems because it's truly the individual that solves all these problems. When we stop buying GMOs, they'll go away. There's no profit in making a product that people don't buy. And you can't have a law telling you whether or not you can buy them or you can't buy them. You can't have a law that nobody can control you or how you spend your dollars. Actually, they can. They control you by, they force, by force. They force you to spend your dollars on war. They force you to spend your dollars on imprisonment camps or jails. Same thing. You know, we have the illusion of freedom, and it's great that we're freer than some places, 